Yeah, Where are we? Deuteronomy. Yes. My mother. Yeah, Israel. Yes. Thou art to pass over Jordan this day hmm. to go in to possess nation greater and mightier hmm. than thyself. Hmm. Cities great and famed up to heaven. Hmm. A people great and tall, the children of Anakim, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say. Who can stand before the children of what is Moses? Thank you, mommy. God bless you. Amen. God bless her. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. Did you all listen to these passages when they were reading it? You are not answering me. Yes. Were you able to digest it? Yes. Are you able to pinpoint that God was talking about their past and present and their future? Is that correct? Yes. So that means you and I, we always have past, we have present, we have future, we have promises, we have failures, we have virtues. All these are combination of life experience of every human being. Past, present, future, failure, promises, virtues, and achievements. So there is no way you are a person that you will not historically package this in your baggage or in your luggage. We all carry it about. That's exactly what is uh, bringing them into remembrance. What God has done for them in the past, what He plans to do in their life, and where He's taking them to. Lord, you are the Lord will lead us to the promised land. Amen. Full of hope and promises. Amen. But as year pass by in my life, in your life, there are pleasant stories to be told, right? There are unpleasant stories to be told. There are good news that people share with you. There are bad news that is so sad that you manage and keep going along. But you believe in the Lord. No one knows tomorrow. That was a powerful song. It's pray to trust in the Lord. May he install it upon us. Amen. You have memories of special events, right? You have disappointments. There are so many stories to be told. If you want to enjoy the way of God, as complicated as it is, connect your spirit to Deuteronomy and go through the children of Israel. You will experience the forgiving, forgiving spirit of God. You will experience his compassionate spirit. You will experience his merciful spirit. And how rough, W-R-A-T-H, God can be against those whom he love. He can turn his eyes of mercy at any time and will be ravaging in poverty. That will not be your portion. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I say it will not be your portion. Amen. Amen. So, always remember whom God is and what God has done. And that he who has done through it one way or the other can take you to a higher level. And no matter any enemy or evil machination, you will say true. Amen. In Jesus' name, you will say true. Amen. Amen. So Moses was preparing the mind of the children of Israel for the task ahead of them. And he was using one strong word. He says, I know you are stiff naked. I know you are ungrateful. I know you are unappreciative. And I know how you contend with the Lord. But remember how God has been to you in the past. Amen. In Jesus' name. So the message is clear. It's a message of belief and unbelief. That's exactly what he said to them. Because of what God has done in their life, he brought them back to memory. He then told it to them. Don't worry. Believe in the Lord. Have hope in him and do what? And follow him. You cannot have hope in something and don't follow the person. That hope will be rendered useless. Because what, what the, the, the hope you have in, in such a person, it should endure you, say endure, yeah. to believe in him or her, which is your God Almighty, and be able to do what? To follow him. I will follow. I will follow. I will follow Christ. I will follow. I will follow. I will follow. I will follow Christ. Yeah. 
ourselves. The need to sustain our life, handing them over in marriages, long life for us, healing us divinely, rebuking attacks in the dream. 99.9 .9 is about yourself. Very few will ask for the test for God to see his kingdom. Father, I am ready. If you invite me to your presence today, I am ready to come. Grant me the heart to walk on it that I will have a befitting place in your home. That should be the paramount question of believers. But it is usual, it is mankind, <coughs> it is human way of life to run after all that is worldly. That is why God is merciful. Yes. That is why he is kind. Yes. And it's not only members of this church that do it, the whole world do it. But it has to desire God, he will bestow upon us. Amen. Beyond gold, Amen. beyond silver, Amen. beyond jewelry, Amen. beyond clothing. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So where are we? It says here we are Israel. Begin to read, continue, Mama. Understand therefore this day, this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee <coughs> as a consuming fire. As a consuming fire. fire. What is the consuming fire there? The Lord who will destroy whatever obstruction that is on their path that are gained dresses. He will be a consuming fire ahead of him. Amen. And he will tread on the fatal land. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I am saying you will walk on the fatal land. On every enemy design, the Lord will consume them before you. Amen. There are two fires of the Lord. The one that was burning the bush and the bush was never burnt. And the one that will burn it to ashes. To cause it to be a bare land. So the one that was burning the bush that was not burnt is the miracle of God walking on a life like the pillar of cloud that will sustain us through difficulties during trials. Mm -hmm. Like the shackle that broke Paul and Silas in the prison. And the guards were sleeping. But God was alive or okay, soon. Mm -hmm. So he let loose the shackle. They were in slumber. And what happened? They walked out of the gates, unknown to the security of human beings. Paul and Silas, they pray. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Jesus. The Holy Ghost. Paul as I lies. They pray. They pray. They sang. They sang. The Holy Ghost. When you look at it, it says the anarchy. Right? I want to walk to the Roman about with your Bible. Did you see why he said anarchy? Yes. Read it. Yes. The children of the anarchy. Yes. Whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard, who can stand before the children? Who are the anarchy? The Goliaths. Tall, six, nine feet. When they pass by you, you have fiercely trembled. Their presence alone, at a sudden impact or appearance, is not to shiver you and cause you to be shivering. But God says they are Goliaths of the world that can fall down flat before you. Amen. The walls of Jericho fell. Don't sing for Joko. Jericho fell down. As the children of God that praise in the Lord Jesus. 
I was a jerk. When I sing this song, I am not doing it socially. You are not in a party. You must nip, say nip. And connect, say connect. Every song to what I'm saying that is related to your life. Whatever the world of Jericho at work should fall down. Amen. At home should fall down. Amen. In your neighborhood harassing you should fall down. Amen. Attacks in your dreams should be neutralized Amen. by the power of the Most High God Amen. at the cross of Calvary. Amen. So I am not singing for joke. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the Lord in the highest. So, so he says, this anarchy, this frightening human spirit, they are like butterflies. Why are you worried about them? I made them. I created them. I breathed the breath of life in them. They will soon return back to dust and be like the sand of the seashore. So they are nobody. So your enemy is nobody. So where the enemy says you are nobody, you are somebody. Because your God has approved of you. All he is asking of you is to let should realize that he's not cheap. Don't toss with him. Don't joke with him. The worst of all, don't begin to look for fetish power. Why are you so stupid? Why am I so stupid and ugly to be going to a psychic to read my hand, an idol worshiper, sending money to Nigeria, to Jamaica, to South Africa, for somebody to do a voodoo for me? The voodoo that has no effect. Do you know what he has done? Whether it's all fake. Don't waste your money. Say, don't waste your money. Waste I will not waste my money. Waste my money. Jesus is more than sufficient. Jesus. I sell it to you every Sunday. Any preacher that, that does not acknowledge the power of Jesus, he has something that's hidden. And no concussion, no concussion should be added to the name of Jesus. I have broken this candle into pieces in your presence. Blood does not come out of it. You are only qualified if you believe upon the cross. To hold it and to effectuate action. It can only bring result if you believe Christ is working with you. But you cannot hold voodoo like that. It will burn your hand. You know when you do it. You know when you do it. Jesus Christ is the ultimate. He's the ultimate. There are other fetish powers. People traveling to Nigeria. Looking for evil things. Coming in to conjugate what is not in existence. They are radical will soon come to light. Amen. Say amen. Amen. It's a question of time. Don't let anybody take the glory of God from you. It's a disgrace, it's an insult to Almighty God. For somebody to lie to you that he can do anything, they cannot do anything. If there are witches and witchcraft, and they are frightening me and you, it is because you have not surrendered your life to God. You must believe that you are ready to die for Jesus at any time. So if death comes, let him take you away now. You are qualified to die. This is not your place. Heaven is your place. When you have that belief, you will march, say march, march. over principalities. You will ride, say ride, right. over them. And you will trust, say trust, and the power of the Most High God. Because He's Lord. He's Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee. Every knee. Every tongue. Confess. this anarchy in those days were using their statues as a means of intimidation. There are people who are using their musia to harass you, now, right? Thinking that you have no power of your own. And truly you have no power of your own. Your source of power and empowerment, there is power, right? Then there is empowerment. That power is from God. When he now empowers you, you are now empowered by the Holy Spirit to confront principalities. So you'll be empowered. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say in Jesus' name. Amen. You will be strengthened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will never be tired. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So the anarchy, they were nobody before the children of Israel. They are parents, they are frightened people. God says, don't worry about them. That He is what do, the deciding factor. 
Say deciding factor. Deciding Only factor. God can decide what will happen to you. All you need to do, where is that mama? Let her come in. I want her to be part of this sermon. She's Mama Davis, right? Can call her in. Tell her her, his, her daughter will not disturb. The Lord will strengthen us all. Amen. Go to second, first Samuel. Let's read verses uh, chapter seventeen, verses four to seven. First Samuel seventeen, four to seven. Let us read quickly. A champion went out out of the camp of the Philistines, an Anakim, a Goliath, a terror. Yes. Named Goliath of God. Yes. Whose height was six cubits and a span. Six cubit feet. And he had a element of grass upon his head. And he was armed with the coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of grass. And he had bricks of grass upon his leg. Yes. And a target of grass between his shoulders. We get to see how much he armed himself. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. Yes. And his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of fire. Yes. And one bearing a shield went before him. <clears throat> And he stood and cried unto the Is this appearance not terrifying enough? Is it not frightening enough? Yes. These were in large numbers. And David was coming before him. He has been armed exactly the way Goliath has been armed. But God prevailed, your Lord will prevail. Amen. He says, The Lord fought a battle for me. I remember when lions were about to destroy my father's cows and, 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 and camels. I tore it into pieces. I had nothing in my hand at that time. How was I able to survive it? That was what Moses was telling them. Do not forget the hand of the Lord upon you in the desert. Upon you when you left Nigeria. Upon you when you were here seeking for a job. Upon you when you were lonely. Upon you when you were deserted. Upon you when friends would never even communicate with you. Upon you when you were about to be removed from your position. Upon you when a husband will leave you alone, dejected and frustrated, and you were looking only unto God for survival. He says, do not forget. So don't forget. How did you come around? Say, come around. Come around. To get to where you are. That lifting hand, say lifting hand. That saw you through now, will see you through. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Pray to the Lord. Go down the memory lane. Recall his goodness. We don't dramatize in this church. You have seen me up till now. Miriam said what? My soul doth magnify the Lord. Have you been called? Oh, magnify the Lord. Yes, any time situation does not all go well. It is human nature to grumble and grudge. But God is so merciful. His mercy will never elude us. In Jesus' name. How then do we come to obey God? I want to give you six different ways. You can obey God with your heart. Is that not so? Yes. How? Your will. Your will. Your desire. Your determination. With your mind. Your will is different from your mind. Oh, yes. And your mind is different from your body. And your body is also different from your finances. There are many ways you can obey your God. The Lord will cause you to obey Him. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. With your heart, your heart ponders towards what you desire. But you must first of all love God more than any other relationship. More than any other achievement you possess. Because that same heart that lunges for something, can you imagine if it's 100% lunging for Jesus Christ? How beautiful it will have been. So your will to commit yourself completely to him, you must have that desire. That is your will. To commit yourself to God. To love him. Sometimes it is difficult. You are watching a program. Very interesting to you. The Spirit of God will just whisper. Say whisper. whisper. It only whisper. It does not, it does not put pressure. 
like the devil. You say, stop this program. Take your Bible. You say, let me watch 10 more minutes. <laughs> Break your Bible. Let me watch 20 more minutes. <laughs> Until you slumber and sleep away. <clears throat> Am I right? Yes, yes. It is so. Because the devil is at work. Because he's always at work. And any time you take your Bible, you begin to snore. And begin to doze. Give me two minutes, I'll be dozing on my Bible. If I'm watching the tennis, I will not doze. So I will switch off the TV and hold the Bible to myself and sleep off. But I'm not watching that TV. Little by little, your heart will begin to do what? To desire your God. He will bestow it upon you. Amen. Your mind. What does your mind do? Your mind researches to know your God. It strengthens you. And it gives you the hope to, to, to follow his ordinances. So in your finances, you must give unto your God. That is the second or the last. About finances, nobody is a kid. The house of God is a place where we worship their responsibilities there. God will enlighten us. Amen. Then, above all, is giving your future. Why? Because this one, it's a powerful song. Group. Your choir said to you, my choir said to you, to us all that no one can see tomorrow. So you must submit your future to the Lord. Your future will never experience corruption. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you cannot dictate exactly what the Lord will do. And you don't know exactly the plan. You know the plan you have, but you know how you do not know how it will materialize. God will cause it to materialize well Amen. for your sake Amen. and for his good name. Amen. Let's go to the second lesson for five minutes. Thank you, together. Yes. Yes. And certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread, mm. they found that, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault for the Pharisees mm. and all the Jews, mm. except they wash their hands. Oh. Matthew what? Matthew 7, Mark. Mark 7, 1 to 13. Yes, I am there now. Keep going. For the Pharisees. And all the Jews, mm. except the wash their hands off, mm. eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except the wash, they eat not, and mm. many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Five. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, had a That is where I am going. The disciples did not have dirty hands. Not that their hands were dirty, but the Jews would wash from here to three quarter before their elbow. And they will worry the same thing. What has this place got to do with the food you want to eat? That's what Jesus is asking them. Are you going to eat with your shoulder? Or what has it got to do? When you now wash here, does it guarantee your kingdom? That's exactly what he's asking them. So they sent investigator from the central city of Jerusalem to watch over Jesus. Do you know there are watchers over us? Very few are good watchers. People with evil imaginations are more time selling than those with good imaginations. But the Lord has granted us power over them. Amen. So they will never have any influence. Amen. So he says, Jesus knows their mind. You may not know the mind of people, but the Holy Spirit will give you a designing spirit Amen. to be able to identify. But only under this condition, if you are in truth with God, you will fight battle from dream into real life. Does it happen to you? Yeah. Sometimes? Because you have no any other God. What is telling you and I is that washing of that has something to do. We will discuss it under five minutes elaborately to ten. That's what he's saying. Now it means that this sultana cannot lead you to anywhere. 
But there are certain rites you do that is the way of your own worship that honors God. That does not mean it guarantees your eternal kingdom. God's law cannot be added to. That is what we must take on today. But there are certain rules we abide with that the way the Lord gave it to the pastor of this church, that gave it to the pastor of the dream of deeper life of, of, of uh, Jehovah Witness, of Kerim and Seraphim, that is their own way of life. Money? Yes. So that does, when you do it, you honor God. But that is not the law of God. So coconut will not take you to heaven. This food will not take you to heaven. This candle, break them, it has no blood in it. Let no one deceive you. If you keep on rolling and rolling in front of this altar till tomorrow, and I'm, oh, I don't trust till the day I die, I am going to hell. That is the truth. And the same man who has tie and suit, carry Bible in their shoulder, putting a little earring, that doesn't take them to heaven. At all. The Jehovah Witness that goes the streets and has voodoo box in, 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 in her closet is a liar. She's not going to heaven, she's going to eternal hell. Fire. So we don't have to deceive God. Thank you, my daughter. So that is the truth. When you now do what you have done here, all these are fruits from the soil. Beautiful from Pathmark. This candle from Ikea. Holy water. Then you live here, you say somebody should go and read your palm. He will tell you lies. Yes. I am telling you, he will tell you lies. Because everybody here has not gone to any parent and they never die. Amen. Why are you going to a palm reader? If I'm going there and I'm deceiving you, I will die your death. Amen. Amen. That is the truth. God is very serious. Don't add anything to God. I am very particular about it. Very important. I am an adulterer, I'm a drinker, I am a witch, I am all this, and I'm worshipping another god again, carrying things from a girl from Port Novo to deceive children of God that have come to fellowship with God in the beauty of His holiness. Don't joke with God. It's not cheap. Hallelujah. 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 Let's take Baba seriously. It's a serious God. Your beauty will never be messed up with. Yeah. So, so he told them, you are all fools. You are washing, you are washing shoulder all the way to this elbow. What has that got to do with you? He says, my disciples did not have dirty hands. But they were not just carrying out ugly rules. But let me tell you one thing. If it is said, that we should come in in our white garment, it does not dis disallow Mama Davis to enter and worship her God and her son. It does not disallow Dr. to enter and worship his God because it is the mind with which you come here and the love and open handedness with which you embrace them that will give them encouragement to be part of you. So, and there is nothing we do here that she has not done today. Her prayer will be even answered than anybody that has to honor and know her belief. Yes, yes. That is the truth. Yes. So you must believe in God. All our prayers are answered. Amen. Amen. All troubles are taken away. Amen. We are far above principalities Amen. and powers. I wish I can treat this. I wish. I wish. I wish. So these Pharisees are hundreds of their own petty rules. They are just too many for Jesus. He doesn't, some of them will be knocking their head against the wedding wall in Jerusalem continuously and they are cheaters. They are users. They will sell one gold of $10 for $1,000. They say, well, it's good luck. It's not good luck. It's cheating. It's usury. That is what Jesus was telling them that you are outwardly worshiping. Go to Isaiah 29. That quote on verse 6 that Yanolu had just read is in Isaiah 29, verse 13. Go there. He says, Don't use God as an excuse to avoid helping your own family. Therefore, 
Wherefore? The Lord said. The Lord said. For as much as these people draw near me. They draw near me. With their mouth. Yes. And with their lips. Yes. You honor me. Yes. But have removed their hearts. Their hearts, hearts are far away from me. And their fear towards That's me. what I told you about the five points of belief and trust in God, <laughs> mind, heart, soul, finances. The Lord will enable us. Amen. You cannot be worrying about what is your diet than what is in your heart. That's the final point. What is in your diet is dog, is uh, pork, is if you is, is snail. Then once you eat snail, the Holy Spirit will desert you. I'm not asking you to go and eat pork here. But <laughs> We don't. Even naturally, it's not healthy. It's not. It's not. But what Jesus is saying that if you don't eat pork and you are full of evil, you are eating pork is in vain. That's what he's saying. Then you are better off in honoring God, not eating the pork and doing good. Let us pray.